Okay, so I'm just going to run through this whole tutorial um, and again focus on the parts that you might have trouble with, but I will do all of it as well. So uh, you can see the first few steps, you really just need to follow through the instructions in the notes, uh, setting the unit. So I've started 3ds Max and I'm going to make a new scene file. So I'm not starting with anything already done, starting with a blank file. And then the first step is to go to the customize menu, unit setup, and then make sure it's on US standard and feet with decimal inches. And then uh, leave system units. So I'm just going to click there to check. No, that's fine. So you shouldn't need to touch system units. That's the units done. And then following on, you need to set the snaps. And so snaps in 3ds Max are the same as object snaps in AutoCAD or snaps in Revit. The buttons that you have on the main toolbar, starting with the magnet that has a 3, all of those buttons there that have the magnets on them are buttons for different, kind of, different kinds of snap in 3ds Max. And before long you should familiarise yourself with all of those, but the first one I'll just turn on by left clicking and then right click to bring up the settings. And we need grid point, uh, vertex, edge, I think for memory, I'll just check those, which ones they're using, uh, and end point's the only other one. End point and vertex are virtually the same thing anyway, in this case, but it doesn't hurt to have them both on. Okay, so moving right along, you then need to create some layers, and this is where I know some of you would have had some problems because you'll see there's a button on the main toolbar that looks like a layers button and it says manage layers when you hover over it. But when you click on that, what it'll do is bring up the scene explorer, which is slightly different. It does let you create layers and manage layers generally, but it is a little bit different to the layers panel. So if you read through the notes carefully, what it's actually telling you to do, and I know quite a few people had this issue last week, it says to turn on the layers toolbar and it explains how to do it, what you need to do is right click in a blank section of this main toolbar. Now on your computers it'll be much easier because you'll have more area to work with the toolbars. Mine's cut off at the edge here, or at the end I can't see any more blank space past the end of this toolbar, but I can still find some blank space wherever the little hand comes up. So if you see that little hand icon, going from the arrow that I've got there to the hand, when I right click there that's a blank part of the toolbar. Okay, and so you can see there we've got layers in the list. And this layers toolbar is slightly different to the Scene Explorer. So you need to understand the difference between those and realise that this is probably um, going to give you better control of the layers and works a lot more like AutoCAD. So if you're used to using the layer manager in AutoCAD, you should be able to use this no problem. Okay, so now I'm going to go and click on this button here to create a new layer. And I'll just check that out. I think it's revolving door. Yep. Okay, so you might remember if you did it the other way, you wouldn't have seen this option to move selection to new layer. That's something people couldn't find last week. And it's because, again, they were using the Scene Explorer, not the Layers toolbar. Okay, so I'll click OK there, and you can see that's now the current layer. Notice it sets random colours to the layers. So you don't need to set colours as you make your layers in 3ds Max, it'll do that for you. You can adjust them if you want to, just by clicking on the layer swatch. But you don't have to. So there's just subtle little things that are easy to miss in the notes there. Okay, so we've got a new layer for the revolving door, and now I'm going to make the first part, which is the hub, that goes uh, in the centre. Talks about using the orbit control here and uh, I'll come back to that in a minute and also making sure snaps is on which I've done already and then using the uh, create panel in uh, or geometry in the create panel to create the cylinder. Okay so I'm going to drag that uh, toolbar so that it's docked. I can hold down shift and the middle mouse button, sorry that's Revit, alt and the middle mouse button to orbit get a view I'm happy with, zoom in and out with the wheel, and I'm going to click on the cylinder button, 
and then make sure I'm snapping to the center of that grid or the origin, bring it out and then up, not worrying too much about the size. So I might just do that again. This is a standard process when you create objects with uh, 3ds Max using any of the primitives here. You generally click and drag to set the first property, release, move the cursor and then click again to set the next property and for other objects you'll see that you need to move the cursor and click again to set subsequent properties. But with a cylinder we only have two properties, the radius and the height. So coming down you can see then the properties for that cylinder on the next page, so going through all of this. There's a really important note there about using the modify panel. So you can see here I've got the properties for this cylinder coming up in the create panel, which is the first tab here. I'm going to click and drag and it will still work for that object. But once you go to do something else, that won't always be the case. So I'm just going to, there we go, uh, click and I've lost it in the create panel. The object's still selected, but I no longer have the properties here under create. And that's because for created objects, they normally don't come up in create panel, they come up in the modify panel. So it's only at first that you'll have them in the create panel, then you need to go to the second panel which is modify and you'll get those same properties again, radius and height. And remember to try what I'm doing here using the spinners to adjust those properties. So by clicking and dragging on those up and down arrows, you can adjust those properties interactively. Or you can click into the field. So here in the radius field, I can click and type zero apostrophe three, which is zero foot three inches. Then for the next property, the height is seven foot. So again, double clicking in height just to select all of that um, field. And then seven apostrophe is seven foot. The final property then is the height. Uh, also two more properties. Next property is the height, so I'm going to set that to its lowest value. And I'm going to use a trick here, I'm going to right click, and that will always set uh, the lowest value possible. So if you right click on the spinner, you can see there it's not setting it to zero because it can't have zero segments, so it's set it to the lowest possible value which is one. And then we want the sides down to four. So I can just click and drag there and easily take that down to four. So we want that to be a uh, box shape at first. It'll become a cylinder again later on, but as I'm sure you know if you've done this part already, it's easier to have it as a box at first. Oh yeah, and then another little easy part to miss, um, the navigation controls you have in the bottom right corner and they can be different colours. So you can see here it's showing you a cube uh, that's grey and if you click and drag on or click and hold down on that little button in the bottom right corner that's now green then you'll see the grey one but at first it will be green. Don't worry at first it'll do the same thing either way. It's either zoom extents or zoom extents selected and in this case that will be the same thing. Uh, and then following on from that uh, it tells you to adjust the perspective viewport shading and here actually that's changed. It won't say smooth and highlights. This is the one thing in the notes that is different to what you'll see. So instead of saying smooth and highlights in the perspective viewport menu, which is this, it'll say shaded. They've just changed the terms. The same with Revit, they changed that in the last release. So here where it says shaded, you can click and you'll get those options and you need to turn on edged faces. I'll show you why. If I click to one side, you can see that this cylinder, I'm still going to call it a cylinder even though we know it's not at the moment, uh, it doesn't show the edges. But if you click on that menu and turn on edged faces, then you'll see the edges. And unfortunately, with the colour of the layer, it's difficult to see them, so I'll change the colour of that layer so it's easier for you to see that the edges are there. So there we are, you can see those edges. Okay, so done all of this and then moving on, you need to rotate that hub 45 degrees and this is really good practice because this is again the way that you use a lot of the 
editing tools in 3ds Max. You'll see on the main toolbar you have these three buttons together, move, rotate and scale. And if you're not already thinking of those together, um, it's, it's a good time to start doing that. So in any uh, CAD or 3D program or even graphics programs, those three tools are generally uh, referred to as a group uh, and they're called transforms. So move, rotate and scale, they're your standard modification tools you'll always have in any of those programs and uh, they're one of the main tools you use to change uh, the position of your geometry. And so here if I select uh, the second one there, rotate, I can use that to select my object and you can use any of those that way. So scale or move also work as selection tools. And you can just switch between them once your object's selected and notice that the gizmo changes. So you can see here the move icon that you maybe remember from Revit. Click on the next one, the rotate gizmo and then scale. Uh, and so notice the colours with move, you have red, green and blue that are nice and clear because they're on the arrows. So red is X, green is Y, blue is Z. And when you go to rotate, they use the same colours. So again, red for X, green for Y, and then blue for Z. So it's just coming down to the next page. Uh, oh yeah, so it's telling you you can type in 45. So you can, if you go down onto the um, status bar, type in 45 for the Z enter and it'll rotate at exactly that amount. So just down here. Another way of doing it is just to click and drag on that circle, but notice that it's not going to round numbers. So another option you can try there is turning on the angle snap button next to your main snap. And then, so it's just like polar in AutoCAD and then clicking and dragging there you can see it's snapping to 5 degree increments and that will again let me rotate 45 degrees. Okay, so moving along, uh, I'll go a bit faster now because you've probably done a lot of this. So the next part, creating the layers, you would have seen in the notes uh, that uh, it works again a little bit differently uh, if you don't have this layers toolbar. So just making sure we click on there and it's enclosure. And again, doing the zoom extents is something that you can try, but you might not need to do that. And you need to create a tube. So this is on, again, standard primitives. And this time, you don't need to create it in exact location. So back to the Create tab, I click on Tube. Just like the cylinder, I can click and drag. Doesn't matter if it snaps on or not here. I'm just going to click and drag out in space there. And then move the cursor and you can see it's going to set the second property which is the thickness of the tube. So when I've done that I'm going to click and then bring the cursor up and that will set the height. So just think to watch what ha uh, happens when you create these primitives. Start by clicking and dragging and then move the cursor to see the other properties change. Right, and so now we need to adjust those properties just like the cylinder. So the radius 1 value is 6 foot and radius 2, 5 foot 11. So just typing into those fields in properties. And remember if you lose the property in the create panel, you can always go to the modify tab and get those properties back. So the height is 7 foot and you'll slice it afterwards. So the height here is 7 foot and then you need to centre that tube on the cylinder. So it's quite simple, you just need to make sure that, that tube is selected click on the Align tool, which has the same icon as Align does in Revit, the big and the small rectangle. Then click onto the cylinder. And here you actually don't need to change any options. 
but we really only need the Z position anyway. So you could turn X and Y off. And, uh, oh no, sorry, in this case it's going to be X and Y but not Z because of the uh, orientation. So there you can see it's lined up the X and Y coordinate for the centre of the tube with the X and Y coordinate for the centre of the cylinder. So that's done. And then you need to slice that tube. So slicing is an option built into the tube. If you've clicked somewhere else, you just need to select that tube again. And you'll see again in the Modify tab that you have the option to turn Slice on. And you need to slice it from 90 to minus 90 from memory. So that's going to give you a semicircle. And then adjust the number of sides. You can see there to 6. So here you can see the sides in the tube, we can just take that down to 6 and that will give us a faceted tube. And we don't need any height segments, so the height segments again you can just right click on the spinner to set that back to 1. So that's going to give us the glass panels essentially. So you can see how much quicker and easier it is than modelling in a lot of other programs once you see what these, all these different tools can do, just by adjusting their properties. Right, so now we need to clone that tube, and cloning is a standard process in 3ds Max you can use with any of these tools, either Move, Rotate or Scale. You can either use a shortcut, Control-V, or right-click and choose Clone from the menu. So there's no special button for copying, because you use that right-click menu to do it. So right-click clone and then here it's really important that you choose copy and not instance. If you'd seen last time that when you change the properties of the second object and it changed the first one it's because you would have had it on instance. So make sure you choose copy there. Click OK and now I've got a second tube and actually that's not the way they're telling you to do it but that's, that's fine. I've got a copy and I can now move that copy out and I'll just show you that there is a copy there. So that's a standard way of copying things that you need to know because often you will want things copied in place. But like I said you can use any of these tools to clone something so if you click on to rotate I'll copy with that. It turns snaps off because that's getting in the way and leave angle snap on. And this time I'll use the shift method so holding down shift with any of these tools will clone as well. So if I click and drag there you can see it's rotating my object and copying it at the same time. And again here you need to choose copy, click OK and now we've got a duplicate and it needs to have different properties so we want that to be sliced from 45 to minus 45. Okay, and so we've got the enclosure half the size of the other one, and so it needs half the number of sides. So it should be three <coughs> sides. Right, and so not far to go. All we've got to do now is the frame and the doors. Okay, so the door is the next part, and this is one part that I know would have caused most people some problems. Uh, and uh, again, once you've seen it done, it should be a lot easier. So here you can see it's just talking about uh, rotating the, um, the hub, I suppose, or the centre pole there, uh, 45 degrees. And I think it's already at the right angle. Let's have a look. Oh, that's just going to be rotated back, that's right. So it's got to be rotated another 45. So I've already got it selected. The centre, oh no, sorry, I'll select it now, clicking on there and now I can click and drag to rotate that around and the purpose there is to have this face of the pole facing towards this uh, edge of the enclosure. So you want that to be perpendicular to the end over here and you'll see why once you make the door. So that's one step that would um, 
chip you up if you don't do that before making the door. Okay, so now I'll make a new layer for the door. And here, I'm going to click on that Create New Layer button, type in my layer name, and notice it's got this option here, Move Selection to New Layer Turned On, but I've got my hub selected, or my pole, so I don't want that put onto this door layer, so I'm going to turn that option off. And I go, now again, that's something that people had trouble with last week, so I'll turn that off. And now we need to change the snaps and have midpoint turned on as well. And then we'll be ready to create the door. So again, just turning that snap button on, right click, and I can turn on midpoint, turn off endpoint. And uh, then the part that I think gave most people trouble creating a pivot door. And so looking at the diagram there, you can see you need to start on the cylinder and then come out to the enclosure. And so it's back on the Create tab. You need to go to the drop-down list and find the Doors tool. There you'll find Pivot. And you shouldn't need to change any properties to begin with. So don't, uh, in fact it'll create problems for you, even if it says to in the notes, don't change any properties there before trying to create the door and just try and get used to the way this this creation tool works. It's similar to the way the primitives work. And uh, actually I'm going to do something that maybe isn't in the notes as well. I'm going to right click on the snaps tool and turn grid points off. Because I don't want it to snap to these grid points in between. So now I'm going to start on the edge of that cylinder on the base there. So just clicking and dragging. Now it should snap to the midpoint, but uh, if it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. We just need to start somewhere on that edge. The midpoint would be good though. Anyhow, I'll just start there. Clicking and dragging, and then you need to come across to set the width of the door. And there, once you've done that, you can set the other edge of the door, or the other side, by snapping to that enclosure edge. Then take it back, and that sets the depth. So that's setting the, uh, the wall thickness, if you like, if we had this door in a wall. Now don't worry that I've gone beyond the um, width of that cylinder, that's okay. But now you can see, if I bring this up, I can zoom while I'm doing it, and it looks like a normal door, and I can just snap to the top of the cylinder there to set the height. So that's the first step, to get it to give you the glass facing uh, or perpendicular to the uh, to the centre. So you might have to have a couple of goes at it, so I'll just undo that and repeat it. So again, starting on the middle, and it, and it should snap to the midpoint there, but because it's got edge on, it's hard to pick up that midpoint. I know it's there, there's the midpoint. But it's a very similar icon to edge as well. So there we are, that's the midpoint. If you do want to get it exactly right, that's how to do it. Get the midpoint there. And you can zoom, you can see there I'm zooming and panning while I do this. So you need to use two fingers on your mouse to do that. And now I can snap to the enclosure there and bring it back now to set the depth. That's just if you want it to be perfectly straight. And it's only a minor thing, it doesn't have to be exactly straight, it's only an exercise, but it's good if you can try these things. And again now I'm setting the height of that door by snapping to the cylinder. Now again, don't worry if it's thicker and higher than what you've made previously, because the first thing you'll do once you've created the door is turn off the frame. So as you can see, I'm just turning the frame off, and that sets the door to only have the door um, or panel inside that uh, frame, and obviously the frame turned off. I'll show you an extra little thing that I don't think is in the notes. You can right-click and choose Move, or you can click on the move button and adjust the position of the door afterwards. And you can try that in the top viewport and uh, you can see there it's a little bit back. So you can set the, uh, the uh, gizmo direction, I suppose, to local. And that will give you an axis that's 
in line with your object and you can click and drag to then adjust it. But if you're going to do that, make sure you set it back to view afterwards or it'll confuse you. So that's only a little thing. It's not essential, but it will make things a little bit neater. Okay, so we've got the door. I uh, know that's one of the, the trickiest parts in here. You can see there, there's my door. The frame's turned off. And then it gives you some properties for the the rail and the uh, other parts of the panel. I'm not going to worry about that. It's close enough to what it should be. But if you like, you can have a look in the modify panel and see what those properties can do. So adjusting the thickness there, the styles, and the bottom rail, you can adjust the size of that glass and the door panel. But again, I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, so now you need to rotate the... Sorry, have I done this differently? Oh yeah, now sorry, I rotated the, uh, the hub and the and, and drew the door at an angle when actually I should have rotated the enclosure. So, so that's a little bit different. So you can see here they tell you it's just uh, slightly different. So, so I'll just get it to the way it should have been. So that's how it should have been actually. And then you'll see in the notes. So this enclosure should have been the one rotated at 45 degrees and now I can rotate it back 45 again. And then you can see the door is sticking into that enclosure so I can select it now and just bring the width down. I'm just going to do that by eye. And you can see it goes from the edge that you've uh, used to create it. And so then, finally, we need to create the frame. So you can do this simply by selecting those two glass panels. Using the shortcut Control v or right-click and choose Clone. Leave it on Copy, click OK. And now we have duplicates on top of the originals. Then in the Modify panel, you need to choose Lattice, which is going to turn those panels, those solid panels, into frame structures built using the edges of those glass panels. Okay, so we want struts only, and then the radius will need to come down, and that will give you the frame. So it's a really quick and easy way of making framing. And uh, so the exact value is one inch and then three segments and four sides. So I'll do that. So there, zero foot one, and then three segments and four sides. And there we go. Okay, so now another part that I know tripped a few people up, um, and that's assigning the materials. So the material button is on the main toolbar, the sphere that has the checker pattern will bring up the material editor. If you don't see the compact material editor, which is what I'm showing there, you need to go to the modes menu and make sure it's on compact, not on slate material editor. Which is compact material editor, and I've just turned it off, so we'll go back in there and uh, bring that back up. So the slate material editor will look completely different. There we are, that's what it looks like need to make sure it's on compact. And I'm going to choose a new slot, an empty slot, so one of these grey ones down below. And then get material. Click on the black down arrow and then open material library. And it's going to take you to your local material library folder. So like a lot of things in these programs you need to go to the program folder to get your resources. And the program folder, like any program, lives on the C drive, and then you find Program Files, Autodesk, 3ds Max Design 2015, and then again Material Libraries. And it's like that with a lot of more advanced programs. 
So now you can see we have AEC templates. Double click there and we've got the door template. So I'm going to simply double click on that and it'll put it into the material editor. Okay, so that's all you need, just the door template. Close this and now I'll start assigning the material. So I'm going to select the door and then click on the uh, assign material to selection button which is the sphere with the green cube or you can just drag it over to the object. Now I want to use the same materials uh, that are in that door for the frame and the glass so I'm going to drag a copy, you can see here we've got one called inner bevel down below because this door has multiple materials and that's really the purpose of this uh, material we've just loaded. So I'm going to drag in a bevel up onto another empty slot, leave it on instance, click OK. Okay, so now I've got access to it and I can drag it onto the inner tube or the inner part of the tube, which is the glass. Then back to the door material, I want the frame, so I'm going to again uh, click and drag that onto another empty slot and now I can drag it onto the outer tube. And that's done. So I've done the materials and also I might use the same material for the inner cylinder. Okay, so in the notes here they might use slightly different materials but that's the basic process and uh, here you can, say, you can see that they're adjusting the door material even further but uh, again, you can read through the steps of the notes to see how to do that. So there's the, uh, the door template, but again, we don't need to adjust it any further. So then, finally, the linking, I'm moving right past all of this, so you can see here we've got those different materials. Again, read through the notes to see how to adjust them. And then finally we need to copy that door and link the door back to the hub. So I'm going to select that door. Make sure the um, axis is on world. Go to rotate. And then holding down shift, click and drag on the blue circle, which remember when you highlight it is going to become yellow. So you need to move the cursor away to see which one's blue. See the blue one is the one that's lying flat on the ground. So I'm going to click and drag. I'll turn snap off as well and just leave angle snap on. Click and drag and you can see then I can bring it around 90 degrees. And uh, oh no, sorry, I've got to also change the, um, uh, the base point there to the bottom option. I'll do that again. So click and drag and now you can see it's rotating around the centre. 90 degrees, three copies, and that's done all of the doors. So then using select and link, which is the third button on the main toolbar, you can click and drag from each door to the hub. So I'm going to click and drag and then highlight the hub. You can see it flashes, so you're just going to watch closely. So if I click and drag from the door, to the hub, the hub's going to flash to show that it's the parent. And there we are. So they're all linked now to the hub and what that means is I can select that hub, rotate it, and the doors go with it. So that's an important concept in animation because when you're animating objects, you don't want to have to go and move each individual object every time you animate something, every time you make something move. And if you think about the way bodies move and uh, other objects that are generally um, animate, then uh, you, you can think about the, uh, the way that they're joined together and realise that uh, when you have uh, something moving, it's usually either subordinate to something else or the parent or the controller of something else. And so in this case, the hub is the parent or the controller for these four doors. So we don't need to go and select all of those objects every time we want to do animation, we just need to rotate the thing that they're joined to, which is again that hub. And so the animation steps 
a little bit involved, but I'll just show you how to do a quick one and then I'll let you read through the more detailed steps in the notes. So you'll see following on from the copying steps, it's got the uh, steps to change the hub back to a cylinder by adding in extra sides, which makes it round again essentially. And okay, so once you've got the uh, object linked, so you can do the animation. I'm just going to turn on auto key, and you'll see then that this slider goes red. That's your time, so I'm going to drag that time to the end to 100, and then still with rotate, I'm going to rotate the hub a full 360 degrees. That's it, done. So I'll turn that off, play, using the buttons next to it, and that's done the animation. Okay, so you'll see again in the notes you've got some slightly more detailed steps that show you how to adjust the timing and the rate of that movement, because you can see it's speed, uh, yeah, it starts by speeding up and then it slows down towards the end. But I'll just leave mine like that for now. And then the very last thing you need to do is import the rest of the model. So just so you know, you don't have to model the whole thing. The rest of it's been done for you. So in the P drive, and this is where you'll find all of the steps along the way. So if something's been causing you problems, again, just go to the class folder, ID modeling, and then 3ds Max exercises, uh, modeling tutorial files, scenes, and then starter. So you can see here, each step along the way is done for you. So we need to import, I'm pretty sure, entrance way. And that's it. I'm just going to click all, OK, and it's done. OK, so now you can play that and you can see the animation still works. OK, so they're all the main steps. There are extra things if you read through the notes, but uh, if you can do those things at a minimum, that'll give you a good overview of the main tools in the program, and then the next tutorials go into a lot more detail. Uh, especially for modelling.